In fact, this policy not, is not only impacting on primary and junior high school, but also senior high school and universities. Right. I have to say that uh, in the past three decades of education reform in Taiwan, there isn't a single policy has such a strong impact on the whole system as the bilingual 2030 policy. Lin Zibin, Professor of Department of Education, National Taiwan Normal University, and host of a project code Integrated Bilingual Teaching in Selective Subject Areas, localizing bilingual education models in primary and secondary schools. Together with two other bilingual teachers from this project in this video are Jiang Jie, a scout teacher in Taipei, and Vanessa Chi, a counseling teacher in New Taipei, sharing their hands-on bilingual teaching experiences. In the past, uh, Mandarin is definitely the dominant teaching language, instructional language in Taiwan. So when it comes to bilingual, what we are looking at is that we need to make these two languages become uh, the students' daily uh, environment, existing in their daily environment. So that means when the subject teacher teach their own subjects, and they can use both Mandarin and English as communicative tools. Right. Yeah. So I won't ask a music teacher when he or she teaches music. At the same time, the teacher needs to tell students that, okay, when I say this, I use blah, blah sentence patterns. You need to remember this vocabulary. No. Mm -hmm. We want the teacher to use these two languages as communicative tools only. And he or she doesn't need to teach the language. Because in schools, we have a subject called English. Yes. So if we want to raise students' English proficiency, it should be done in English classes. Right. Right? Because these English teachers, they, they are trained to teach this language as a subject. Yeah. They know the uh, linguistic features of the languages, mm -hmm. they have the pedagogical knowledge. Exactly. They also know how to assess students' language proficiency. So for these English teachers, they teach English as a subject to raise students' English proficiency. Mm -hmm. But that is not enough because, for example, in junior high schools, under the basic 12-year uh, basic education curriculum guideline, every week we only have three periods of English lessons for junior high school. It's not enough. So if we can make school a good bilingual environment, then students can use the knowledge they learn from English lessons, mm -hmm. and they can apply it in their daily conversation. So if the school can be a good bilingual environment, I think that is the most ideal picture of bilingual education mm -hmm. in Taiwanese schools. The direction moving towards bilingual, multilingual is, is, is to me, is a trend globally. In many other countries, they also promote bilingual, multilingual in their system. However, my worry is that if we want to change the use of the language of Taiwanese people, it's a huge social uh, reconstruction movement or a project. So it takes years. Probably we, we need to wait till 2040, even 2050, if the policy continue. Right. Yeah. I can, uh, let's take Singapore as an example. Singapore uh, becomes uh, independent in 1965. The Singapore government spent more than about 23 years to make the whole Singapore school system become bilingual. But if we want to make Taiwanese schools to become all bilingual in 10 years, I don't think it's feasible. We need to realize that every change takes time. Okay, even if it's a minor changes of instructional language. It involves different aspects. We need qualified teachers, right? Yes. Those teachers who can teach their subject through two languages, right? Mm -hmm. But apparently we don't have that many. 
Okay, in Taiwan, from primary all the way to the end of senior high school, we, we, we have in total about 300,000 in-service teachers working in school settings. But most of them, or the majority of them, they've never been trained to teach their own subject in two languages. I think when we promote policy, we need to be realistic. Absolutely. We need to know what the school's uh, practices is like at this moment. Based on this understanding, we can set reasonable targets for schools to achieve. Step by step. Yes, I have to say, most of the principal and teachers, they are willing to follow this policy. As long as we give them sufficient time and sufficient training and sufficient resources. So the, actually my major concern is that currently we are pushing it too fast, especially at a local authority level. Because as far as I know, at the central level, the Ministry of Education, they actually said, uh, uh, actually the, ta the, the, the KPI they said, mm -hmm. if we compare that to those KPI different local authorities have set. The ministry's target is more reasonable, I have to say. Right. And it is more like a, a, a gradually increase of schools promoting or doing bilingual teaching. But if we look, let, look at all local authorities, most of their KPI are much higher. They set much higher KPI than the KPI set by the ministry. Yeah, let's say like, oh, okay. Uh, if we recall, previous mayor of Taipei, uh, Ke Wenzhe, mentioned that all the schools in Taipei City, I mean primary and junior high school in Taipei City, will become bilingual school by 2026. When I heard it, I said, come on. It's insane, I have to say. 双语课其实是加了英语这个媒介之后，然后拿来做一个沟通的管道。所以好不容易有老师们愿意去投入进去，也有很多的经费挹注进来，所以很很希望很祝福所有有心想要投入的人都不要都可以不用承受这些压力，因为其实这是要花时间的。所有的学习、所有的事情要开花结果，都需要花
currently, when we promote bilingual teaching in schools, actually, we don't ask all the schools to practice it in the same way. No, we believe that in Taiwan, in the future, probably after 10 years, 20 years, even 30 years, we probably will have different models. Models is a plural, a models of bilingual teaching. Because as you just mentioned, those teaching strategies can be applied in Taipei schools, cannot work in other rural schools. And the first principle is that we want uh, the teacher can teach and student can, um, can learn. That's the best practices. And in different schools, they, they, they would definitely use different strategies. If you are a subject teacher like music, physical education, when you teach your students, the first thing you need to make sure you do it well is that you teach the subject content rather than English. That is an add-on. That's a bonus you provide to your student. You give them a good bilingual environment. But you cannot sacrifice the essential part just because of you want to do bilingual teaching. No, you cannot do that. Yes. But unfortunately, we do observe in some schools under certain local authority or different approaches, because you know, different schools, they may adapt different approaches to implement bilingual teaching. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they actually ask students to, to memorize those uh, terminologies for physical education or for health education. To me, it doesn't make any sense. I think there will be two sets of issues. One is, of course, the teacher's, his or her own English proficiency. There is a continuing debate, and I do have some concerns on that, is because currently, the ministry set a target for qualified bilingual teachers. Uh, they need to have the European Common Framework B2 right. level of English proficiency. But to me, that level is very high. And not many subject teacher, I mean subject, subject teacher, not English teacher, can achieve that. And the following question I would ask is that, do we really require teacher to have B2 such a high English proficiency level to be a good bilingual teacher. And the other set of issues is, do they know about those strategies of doing bilingual teaching? Because these teachers, they are used to be trained to teach their subject content. So they are very good subject teachers, mm -hmm. but it's through Mandarin only. Mm -hmm. But now you need to use both Mandarin and English to teach your subject. So they need to learn, they need to have more professional development in learning how to use two languages to teach the subject and student can understand. If, if we look at the students uh, that these teachers are facing, one of the premises of doing good bilingual teaching is that the teacher need to design the bilingual subject teaching based on students' English proficiency level. Customize it. Yes. 英文程度跟雙語課程的設計有極大的關係因為它牽涉到你的活動的英文的比例量跟難易程度所以我會在接到新班我就會先去跟英文老師或是他們的舊教務處拿他們上一次的英文段考成績對我就先去看大概知道這
then we can have a bigger population of teachers who are able to do bilingual teaching or to be trained to do bilingual subject teaching. But when it moves to junior high level, the subject content becomes more and more difficult, more and more terminologies. And the, quite a lot of concepts are abstract. Yes. So it makes, it makes it more difficult for teachers to explain in English. So usually we will give the advice to teachers in junior high level saying that they can recall their experience when they use Mandarin to teach different units within a semester. Some of the units when you use Mandarin to, in, to, to do your teaching, if the student, they can understand this concept easily when you use Mandarin, then this, this unit you may consider you can transform into bilingual first. For those units, if the concept is very abstract, or when you teach in Mandarin, one third or even half of the students, they cannot catch up. Mm -hmm. Then please don't bother to make it bilingual. And make it even yeah. worse. Yes. Currently, the capacity of pre-service teacher training and in-service teacher uh, a professional development provided by the Ministry of Education, every year we probably have the capacity of training around 1,700 teachers. Under my project, we provide uh, the, the very basic training for those who are going to do bilingual subject teaching in their schools under my project. So as I mentioned, we have a series of training. We got different parts. First, we want the teacher to know that what are those common instructional language you can apply when you teach your subject. It, it, it doesn't directly link to the subject content. I mean, some instructional language we will use in classroom, like we, uh, we say stand up, open your book, turn to page 20, right? something like this, or line up. Yes. Yeah. So these are very basic instructional language. By using that, at least your classroom start to be bilingual. We also have a set of so-called, uh, we call it SIT teachers. They work with us, so they are writing uh, lesson plans as a reference for teachers who will, in junior high school who would like to do bilingual subject teaching as a reference. Further, we give teachers some training. We teach them certain principles. And based on this principle, when they go back to their classroom, they need to make their own professional judgment mm -hmm. when they are going to use English, when they are going to use Mandarin right. for their subject teaching. My advice to the parents who are worrying about this policy, I think the best way is that if your kids is enrolled in a so-called bilingual school, why not ask for permission to observe your kids' bilingual lesson? Yangsai. 因为现在很多普遍迷失都觉得英文比例越多越好，很多家长也会有迷失，觉得自己孩子听很多英文就是好，但其实我觉得像我自己在做双语课，很多学生他不懂，他只是follow而已，看旁边的人在干嘛，他